coming to with Cesar Gomez or is he his replacement? <laughs> his replacement. Enjoy. Okay. We good? Okay, so we're going to be talking, uh, in my part of the talk at least, briefly just a quick introduction to Singularity, uh, which is a software that I'm a developer on. Here's our website. Um, so Singularity is developed as a container solution for high-performance scientific computing, as opposed to Docker, where um, they mainly develop for industry solutions. Um, there are kind of three main reasons that we've been finding it useful um, to have containers in scientific computing. One, escape dependency hell. Somebody having to, you know, go around and manage everybody's versions of their libraries for every single scientist. Um, number two is that you can ensure that your code is going to work on your laptop the same way that it's going to work on the cluster every time. And that's a huge benefit. Uh, and a third, also very important um, kind of point for scientific computing is we can take one file and we can send it we can send it everywhere, and um, you know that's really great for reproducibility of your research. You can take that file, send it to some other uh, supercomputer, and have somebody verify your results. Um, so I'm sure many people who have worked on at HPC are familiar with this scenario. You know, on the left, you're working on your computer, and you run some code, and it works, and you send it over to, uh, you know, run on the HPC, and all of a sudden, nothing works anymore. So that's what we developed Singularity for. Uh, so Singularity, uh, any, sing any user on the cluster, they can run a container without any special privileges, uh, as opposed to Docker, where they're kind of always having a, a root level daemon running. Um, Singularity integrates right into an HPC inter infrastructure. So uh, when you would normally run whatever code that you've uh, built, you can instead just run a Singularity container as an executable, uh, but instead you're executing now inside of a container. Um, Singularity is portable between systems. We allow you to run your Singularity container on essentially any system that can support Singularity and uh, we actually have users that are running on you know incredibly old kernels. We don't require any new features so you don't have to take use of namespaces if you don't want to and it'll run back on you know kernel 2 even. And then any user can bring any container onto the HPC. And so you don't have to worry about screening a user's container for malicious content. You don't have to worry about security implications of people bringing any container that they want to onto your HPC system. And that makes the job a lot easier for administrators and IT security people who are worried about uh, malicious code being run. And again here, I kind of reiterate the same points. Um, something really important to note is the concept that we have one single image file and for you know, scientific work, that's, we found that's really important. One of the things that we talked about in a paper that we submitted for publishing about Singularity is the fact that we can now use just an image file to distribute not only the code that you've used to run your experiments, but also the environment you use to run it in and data that you used to generate. And so you can you know, ensure that somebody who wants to reproduce your results has the means to do so. Um, so here's a list, uh, incomplete list of some of the places that have installed Singularity. Uh, there's a couple places I think in the top 10 from the top 500 list, like Stampede is on there, um, GSI, which they're still working on their cluster there. Uh, so the basic usage of Singularity kind of falls into three main parts for the workflow. Uh, your first part, you're going to be working, you're going to create an image file. So that's usually done with pseudo singularity image or singularity create, and you give it a name. And that creates a physical .img file on the disk. And then the second part is to bootstrap it, and that's the process of installing whatever software you want on your image, um, you know, configuring inside the image your operating system, and then you're going to run it. And we can run it in you know, three separate ways. Singularity Shell just opens up an interactive shell inside the container. Uh, Singularity Exec will open up any executed, or will execute any file inside the container that you want it to. And then Singularity Run is sort of a special command. We can, on the bootstrapping process, we can actually generate a script inside the container that will do anything you want when you do Singularity Run. And that's actually what happens when you uh, just directly execute the image file. 
is that it will execute that run script and allow you, you know, to just execute the image as an executable. So this is kind of a, just a small comparison in, in contrast between a couple other um, container solutions. So um, as far as um, HPC goes, Singularity fulfills uh, what we had determined were some very important uh, points. And you can kind of see that Docker doesn't fulfill a lot of things since Docker is, is um, developed with a totally different kind of goal in mind. Uh, and Shifter and Charlie Cloud are uh, similar to Singularity and that they're both developed also for HPC environments. Um, however, we do have some slight differences between them. And this is just, just an overview of a couple of the commands and what we are able to run as far as container formats. And so now I'll turn it over to you. Hello. For the full size, please. So, good morning to everyone. I hope you enjoyed last night. <laughs> uh, I'm this guy, Cesar Gomez, which is the guy that appears in every uh, on the website and on, on every other place. Uh, had a medical issue. He's well. I uh, don't mind on him, but. Uh, uh, we will have a little secret between all of the room and me, and this talk was given by Cesar. So if anyone asks you, I'm Cesar. <laughs> I'll be talking uh, about, uh, given uh, uh, the introduction Michael uh, gave us on Singularity, I'll be talking about uh, an, a specific HPC use case for uh, Singularity. Uh, for those of, of you that hadn't worked as a systems administra as administrator on a supercomputing center, the real pain is that when uh, one user opens a ticket, uh, pushing you to upgrade some kind of library. It's a, the hell. There's, there's no worse uh, thing than that. Uh, you have a very stable configuration very well performant configuration and uh, the trickiest part of that is maintaining that over time. So as long as you don't uh, upgrade anything, everything will be well. So uh, by the time you ask someone to install this 1.0.0p4 uh, of OpenSSL because you need that for that Python library that connects to any other place, you are totally screwing them up. So don't do, please. <laughs> but given that, we have Singularity <laughs> to rescue us. Uh, I'll be talking about, uh, I won't be talking about the creation uh, of a portable container because Michael did better than me. So I'll be talking about uh, two use cases for Singularity in the HPC environment. One of them is uh, having access to InfiniBand interconnection and actually using that. And the other one is having uh, very expensive GP GPU cards installed on the machines and actually using them with the same uh, st software stack you are used to in your Ubuntu or in your Debian laptop. So, uh, oh, well, uh, text is very small because I didn't do the presentation. I do it better. But it's uploaded to the website. One of my slaves uploaded uh, like uh, five minutes ago, so uh, the finishing files will be available to all of you so you don't get blind by having to look at this small text size. <laughs> In this part uh, are the uh, basic commands of uh, creating a container. You select this as parameter is important as you select the size for the container. You can have a container as big as you need because it creates a, a sparse file on the file system. So let's say you need 32 gigabytes, but uh, maybe you want to be using them uh, since the beginning of your development. Uh, you, you will create an actual 32 gigabyte uh, file, but it will be like maybe 200 megabyte on, on the file system. So it can grow as, as uh, you are putting things inside the container. 
Uh, the bootstrap definition is uh, the secret sauce for singularity. It's uh, all of all of the work with singularity will be done in the definition files. It's uh, where you uh, have a minimal setup of the of the Linux distribution you are going to use within the container, and then you add as many software as you need and as many. Uh, stages for building the software or installing any code you need to install inside the container. And uh, uh, one of the uh, options is expanding the container. Given uh, you're running out of space because you have to download those NVIDIA drivers that take one gigabyte compressed and like five uncompressed, <laughs> you will have to expand your container. Uh, the easiest definition file is uh, in this form. Uh, the very first thing you specify is the bootstrap method you are going to use. It, uh, almost all of our work has been done on Jam with CentOS or the bootstrap with Debian or Ubuntu. Uh, you select the operating system version and the mirror you are going to download that. Uh, there's a very clever solution for that, given you can install apt cacher ng in the machine you are creating the containers and you only download uh, the RPM or dev files once and uh, the container creation will speed up over time. On the run script section, it's uh, uh, you write the code that will be executed when you call singularity run or slash dot slash uh, container name. And uh, in the post section, is uh, the secret sauce part for your reproducibility, as uh, Michael was talking to us. Let's uh, have a look at the example. Uh, these guys uh, have been working in a blind association in Spain, so they do so tiny uh, text in order to uh, push you to our association of blind people. <laughs> We only have to concentrate on this part. We are creating a bunch of directories uh, for the paths uh, we are going to bind uh, between outside world, uh, given the machine, and inside world, given the container. So let's say we have a parallel, a very high speed parallel file system for Scratch. We can bind uh, this Scratch inside the container. So when our application running inside our environment needs to write local files per node, they can be written in the uh, fanciest hardware available. And uh, uh, if you need to dump some of your partial results in a shared file system, you can point them to a scratch file system that is shared among the machines. So it gives you uh, access to the actual uh, enjoyable part of running code on a supercomputer, uh, on a supercomputer, which is uh, everything is faster than at your laptop. And uh, by this uh, part of the uh, definition file, you are installing uh, every dependence you are going to need. This step is, is run on your local machine, so uh, the root privileges you are needing are more or less granted or can be run inside a virtual machine that you have installed in a machine you don't have uh, root access, let's say. And uh, for the run script, you are loading as many uh, environment variables uh, you're going to need as possible. So in the case of the examples, you're going to, oh, it won't be there. Uh, you are going to uh, use open MPI libraries with InfiniBand, with local InfiniBand drivers binded to the image, and you are going to use the open MPI version that suits most your code. So you are not limited to the open MPI version or uh, Intel MPI version available at the supercomputing center. Uh, given that, we have a uh, almost magical example, as Greg told us yesterday, of what can be done with uh, containers. This is actual code in a Spanish supercomputer. <coughs> this is uh, native code. 
It's a latency value. It's the same code run inside a CentOS singularity container and the same on a Ubuntu singularity container. As you can see, there's a improvement only by updating the version of the operating system. On the other hand, <laughs> if, if you follow the path of CentOS uh, 7.3 within Singularity, you're not going to have so much bandwidth. And the scale doesn't make sense because there's no, no such difference between uh, the parts. But uh, the general idea is a container is performing better than native code for this specific use case. And in terms of bandwidth, a container is performing almost equal that native code within uh, the cluster. The, this is the setup for the benchmarks. Uh, will be uploaded with the with the presentation to the web page. All another example of trying to make you blind. Uh, as you as you cannot see. <laughs> I will tell. Uh, we are installing uh, the CUDA version we are going to need within the container, and the only thing we have to have is the driver available at the, at the external file system. Given it can be loaded as a module to the kernel, uh, we can run this code uh, with the libraries we are needing, and we can take the advantage of having a very powerful GP, GPU card in the in the host and we have all, all of our stack we're used to outside the host so another example this time is uh, with chainer it, it will be hard uh, if if you thought the other slides were the difficult ones this <laughs> it's paulo's <laughs> fault uh, now we are debootstrapping the last version, the last uh, LTS version of uh, Ubuntu. And for the post part, it, you can see we are compiling uh, OpenMPI and installing CUDA inside the container. So you will have matching versions of the uh, CUDA stack and CUDA drivers inside and outside the container. And uh, you are loading this, those libraries uh, when running the container. So you don't have to take care about uh, running some script just before calling uh, SBatch or any other uh, queue manager you are going to use because the container will take care for itself of setting up the correct environment. Uh, more crappy small text. Uh, now you are compiling, actu actually downloading and compiling the, the source code for Chainer. <coughs> And by the time you need to run that, uh, you are going to call the Python executable inside the container with the chain example code that lies inside the container. In case you need to uh, write, your home directory will be binded directly inside the container. So, uh, so anything you are writing uh, uh, in the home directory <coughs> inside the container will be outside also. And uh, if you need to bind uh, special folders for, uh, let's say, drivers or uh, libraries that uh, for uh, the InfiniBand stuff, uh, you can bind them uh, by pasting uh, outside path and inside path. <laughs> and uh, the container run script will set up the environment for using these uh, libraries. Uh, I'm a bit long on time, so I will give you some time for questions and thank you very much for the presentation somebody has to ask something we have a couple of minutes for questions any questions could you provide some intuition why running it in a container would be fast we were guessing about uh, newer versions of the uh, uh, of GCC compiling the libraries inside the container. 
but we didn't profile that. That's something we found, uh, but it's more likely that Ubuntu 16 is using GCC5 and, uh, uh, and CentOS uh, is using uh, a bit older version, so it's, it's likely it could be like that, but we don't have uh, data, it's just guessing. Yeah. Uh, but for what I've seen, we can also find, for example, directories and so on. I guess the code in the container can also do some sort of escalation if you run it. So it's nice. Oh, you, ha you will have the same permissions. Well, uh, can you repeat the question? Oh, um, he was asking if uh, you are binding uh, host directories inside the container, you can escalate privileges inside the container for actual file system outside the container. Uh, when you're running the container for the creation part, you need uh, root privileges in the machine. But by the time you're running the container, you will be running them with the actual user uh, privileges that is running the container. So in a shared uh, supercomputing environment, it's likely an unprivileged user. Let's say you have to bind some uh, ETC library verbs for infinite libraries. And those files are owned by root and only write by root. Inside the container, you will have the same permissions for this file. So you, you cannot do anything inside the container that won't be a, a lot to you inside the con outside the container. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah. You could use modules. I didn't understand you. Environment module. Yeah. Environment module. But you have to install the module. Yeah, you have to have a module installed inside the container. Uh, yeah. A bit louder, please. You mentioned that singularity run does not require root permission, right? But my understanding is that it requires either Yeah, so I mean, the question. <coughs> okay, so the question was uh, the understanding was that uh, singularity requires either uh, user namespaces or a set UID binary. Okay, excuse me. I'll just hold it. Yeah, and so the answer is essentially yes. So. Um, that's the entirety of how Singularity is working, is we're either having a set UID binary, in which case all privileges are dropped before any user code is run. We only use it to do certain things like that require uh, root privileges. Um, or on some newer kernels, you can do it entirely in user space, and in which case then you're using user namespaces instead. Yeah, that's all we have time for. Let's thank the speakers again. But if it goes green, it's okay. Ik heb even op andere dingen op tafel en dan kies ik.